the government's help of. I think that is something what any state would require. Uh, it is, all what I can say is uh, we share a good relationship with the central government and uh, with the neighboring states as well. In fact, uh, first time we have a situation where Telangana state government will be working together in a very strong way. Where interlinking of reverse is taking place with both states coming on to one central platform. So that's something which was never done before, never done before. Something is happening now. So bilateral relations are very strong. And as far as the other part is concerned, uh, what the uh, professor asked, we spoke about desalination plants, we spoke about interlinking of rivers, we spoke about electric buses. All these are components where environment is looked at in a more positive way. So phasing out of 11,000 and on diesel buses and bringing whole of them into electric mode thousand buses each, I think we'll be calling for a global tender. So it's a very strong, sustainable BOT model what could be evolved because the current road, current road transport corporation of ours is already in existence. It's just doing it with the diesel bar, with the diesel bus. And uh, per kilometer, the cost per kilometer on diesel works out around about 15 to 16 rupees. Whereas if the same would be converted into electrical, it's just 1.2 1 1 units kilowatt hours, 1.3 units. So probably it could be 3 rupees. If wind energy also would be brought into this, uh, renewable energy would also be brought into it. You can start out with 3 kilometers, uh, 3, 3 rupees per kilometer, and it could slide down to even 50 paise per kilometer as well. And uh, to bring about profitability into this corporation, the entire uh, the workforce, that is the drivers and the three uh, drivers and the conductors, the workforce, we are absorbing them into the government so that this corporation could be clean. So this corporation need not be bothered about uh, the, the recurring expenditure what would uh, entail from uh, uh, the drivers and the Conductors part of it. So, by and large, this corporation now will become a very sustainable, strong financial model, which will help any big investment to come in a very big way. So, this is a positive step towards uh, cleaning up of uh, the environment. So by and large, we are, uh, we also want to bring about uh, environmental friendly policies. We want to bring about, uh, uh, we want to change this pollution policy also pass in a big way. We want to bring about certain professionals uh, who have a lot of knowledge in this pollution, come and join us in a big way. So that, you know, uh, the moment I took over the reins, uh, I just asked uh, someone in the government to uh, handle the uh, pharma part of it. As to what the numbers officially were and what the numbers unofficially the toxic waste uh, officially recorded is 30,000 tons. Uh, the unofficial records speak about 1 lakh tons. So the balance of 70,000 tons is either going into the sea or it's being burned into the air. So I just want to, so, so we decided that you know, we need to bring in certain professionals into this who, are, who, who have a lot of knowledge as to what they're talking about especially in pollution. So we want to take care, we want, we want to handle the entire uh, uh, procurement of waste so that it could be handled properly. So these are the few things what you know, we will be doing going now and now. So I think by and large, we want to promote uh, Thank you very much. Uh, picking up now on a thing that uh, uh, Dr. Ramesh brought up was the ease of doing business, which you can imagine. This is a business association that's that's paramount for uh, for our members. Uh, so it's great to see that that is something that's high on your priority list. The one thing that I would just comment that 
it's great to have a single point of contact. We do that here in the US with states have a single point of contact. The key is that single point of contact is empowered to be able to drive the process. So it's that, you know, if you have a single point of contact, it still takes a year because that, that individual is not able to drive the process quicker. So we have just uh, emphasized the empowering of that single point of contact to drive the process through as opposed to just managing it uh, across the different agencies. So but, uh, we're very encouraged to see that. And especially with how you open today up, you kind of get the underpinning for doing business in a, uh, in a region with honesty, trust, and political stability, which are paramount and key for, uh, for the businesses to thrive. One question, as, uh, AP has been known for certain sectors. We've talked a lot about agriculture and healthcare. What are the new sectors or the emerging sectors that you would like to encourage the business community, whether it be space, whether it be something in technology? What is it something that you would like to encourage American businesses to look at to uh, come to AP with in order to grow and build and invest? Robert, as you said, I think uh, the reason is, uh, as you said, single point application. We just not want to just monitor that. We want to drive it. That's exactly the reason why we said it will be governed by the chief minister himself. I would be the chairman of that uh, committee, and uh, so that that I think would set. Uh, Everything what the state is going to give, I think that would be done on a voluntary basis. And as far as everything what central government would have to be giving in, that we would pursue. And uh, I think uh, central government is also very proactive and hopefully things would go off very smoothly. But uh, not many of them require state central government's permission in that type of thing. So permissions by and large would be very speedy and uh, land and power and water, these are the things what would also be very, very, we uh, will provide them, so I think we have absolutely no problems with that. And, uh, coming to uh, emerging sectors, where uh, I just listed out quite a few of them. I think France have strong sea coast what could be used, whichever way we want. Anything you want to export, we're there. Uh, Desalination plant, we're just going to uh, Metros, we're just going to And BOT models, all these things can be taken out. Ports, we just going to And then uh, internal models, we have a, a Buckingham Canal that could be revived, which would straight away connect the entire coast or north to China, including uh, uh, all the way to China. Ferrying costs is of course much, much, much cheaper than uh, taking, a, uh, taking anything out of the road and taking anything through the rail. Ferrying costs is much cheaper. So that would be a phenomenally big project. Could, uh, uh, set a change. Well, I just spoke about electrical buses and I said the corporation, the bus corporation is very strong after removal of uh, these employees from that part and uh, diesel versus electricity. And then replacement research, uh, building input universities, food processing, uh, improving the quality of our aqua and agricultural products. You know, something like what people like any anything what can what uh, where where agriculture could be harnessed properly. We are the we are the place. Okay, we'll open it up now for a, uh, a few questions from the uh, from our members. I believe we'll start off with Jacobs and Amir F. Takari, who uh, heads up international development for Jacobs. Thank you, Robert. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, I very much enjoyed the presentation uh, this afternoon. Um, I'm with uh, Jacobs. Uh, we are uh, one of the world's largest uh, engineering firms and professional services firms. Uh, we have uh, quite a lot of work uh, in India, particularly with the Capital City Project, where Jacobs was the program manager. My question uh, to you today is, uh, what's, what's your vision for the Capital City Project? Do you still see smart cities as an integral part of uh, the development and future of, of AP going forward? Thank you. So basically, smart cities are something that they are the future. Ultimately, all the all the important cities would have to be turned into smart. So 
that would be a priority. Vaisak is one such place which is high on the priority. It's one of the, in AP it could be termed as one of the most cosmopolitan places. So there would be a lot of focus on that and uh, anything you have on that, we have already covered it, but it's important. Uh, Nelson Finnegan, uh, President of McLarty and Associates. Uh, thank you so much, and thank you for making this one of the first stops on your visit. I have been a, was a longtime board member of the U.S. India Business Council, and I'm currently a board member of the Atlantic Council, so I think you could not have picked two finer institutions <laughs> to host you today for lunch. Uh, my question relates to one of the issues that came up over and over and over again in the presentation which is providing your people with health care at a reasonable cost. Uh, one of the issues that we have seen over the years that is one of the most difficult in assuring affordable health care is the cost of pharmaceuticals. And I wonder what your strategy is for dealing with uh, the cost of pharmaceuticals uh, to provide broad access to your, pay, to your people. Andhra Pradesh has got a strong coastline, as I just spoke about. There are a lot of pharma companies already, pre already prevalent in Andhra in, in AP, because of its strong presence. What we are wanting to do is, uh, the FDA norms, the World Health Organization norms, the WHO norms, these are the things what in procurement to state government entities was not a factor. But uh, now, after we have come into power, uh, in fact, just uh, coincidentally, just a couple of days we had a review meeting with uh, uh, the health department. And in that department, uh, just a couple of days ago, we decided that, you know, henceforth procurement norms should be at least WHO. This is something what uh, we have also taken, uh, taken into consideration. Because under the quality of the medicine given, until unless it is improved, and where you know, uh, 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 no. until unless it is improved, it doesn't yield good results. That's one of the very, very important points we also understand, and we're doing it on a big way. In this process of doing whatever we have in mind, I think it's going to be one of the most talked about, talked about model what we want to take. If this goes well, this entire country would actually look up to us. We want you to ensure that, you know, any Thing what is above 1,000 rupees is covered. So for that, you know, we, we're making sure that the number of diseases what come under the insurance policy, that they're increased. Uh, the national policy speaks for around 900 or odd diseases. We wanted to take it up to 2,000. And then uh, we wanted to improve the quality of our uh, domestic uh, internal hospitals. So every hospital, we want to revamp them in a very big way so that every hospital is to the standards, to the best of the Indian standards what we have. We want to upgrade every hospital to that level. So we want to bring about all these changes. So hopefully in the next uh, uh, three years, uh, with, uh, thankfully with God's grace, uh, hopefully we would uh, we'd like to see some changes for about. Okay, being uh, cognizant of time, uh, Chief Minister, what we'd like to do, we've got three quick questions. I will call, uh, I've got three uh, cards up. Uh, if you'll name, company, quick uh, question, we'll give them all three together, let you react to them, and then we'll make sure we're on time. Okay. That sound good? I just had a question about skills development, especially in light of um, your 75% reservations of in-state employees and how we can help upskill the workforce 
especially as India is now trying to attract manufacturing jobs in IT and tech. So is that going to be government-led or are you going to be working with the private sector? Thank you. Thank you. Steve. Thank you very much. Uh, Steve Jacobs, Philip Morris, International. Um, not so much a question as an offer. Uh, we used to be a major producer of, um, of leaf in Andhra Pradesh, and I was listening to your comments about agrarian reform, and we would very much like to come in and talk to you about our ideas of how we can reform the production and marketing system that would bring greater farmer income and value to through good agricultural practices to the farmers in that area. We would be open to that. We'd like to talk to you. Great. Thanks very much, Steve. So we've got one on finance and uh, worker development. This one is Sala Bonds. These kind of uh, avenues we have to look at it. Every avenue what uh, needs to be looked into where cheap financing is available, the cost of the funds are low. I think that all those areas would have to be looked into. So I think uh, even uh, P.V. Ramesh himself, uh, the background itself is uh, he was uh, RDC chairman, rural electrification uh, chairman, and uh, he was finance secretary as well. Those kind of details, if you want to be, if you're interested, you could uh, spend more time with more that particular details. As far as skill development is concerned, uh, this is one area where we would have to focus on. So to begin with, you know, to begin with, if we're taking one parliament decision, if we have 25 parliaments, uh, we're taking one parliament decision and then identifying one Superior Engineering College, where the facility could be set up. And then in that facility, which would be funded by the state government, uh, we would be involving the local industry, asking them what kind of uh, skills they would require. Somebody is coming forward to set up a factory. Uh, we would ask them beforehand, as to what are the qualifications that you require, what are the uh, uh, what are the skills that you require, and we would be training them, training our children to suit their to suit their requirements. So it would be a combination of the local industry as well as the government who would be imparting training in these uh, uh, colleges that we identify as a as a, as a hub where where training could be given. And as far as taking a, a external help, like as you said, uh, that would be welcome. In fact, you know, if any evaluation that could be brought about, that would give confidence to the international community, that would give confidence to the uh, people who are wanting to come and uh, uh, set up uh, industries, I think that would be uh, an important part. For anything, anybody who's, who's of that credibility, who holds that kind of certification and that kind of credibility and who can give confidence to the people who are coming here and setting, wanting to set up their base here, then to be welcome for us, to be welcome to this. Very nice. Well, thank you. The other gentleman was talking about tobacco processing. And uh, uh, ITC is also very strongly present uh, in our state. And uh, we would definitely welcome that. This is one thing that uh, requires, because when, only when there is competition, there is better rates. So if you could definitely 